You're not black? I was working in a college town that had a really amazing diverse food scene. One day during lunch, I walked over to my favorite Ethiopian restaurant. It was a super relaxed environment inside. They were kind of nestled into a shopping plaza, had dim lighting and had mismatching dining room tables and chairs that kind of make you feel like you were at a cool aunt's house. You just knew you were going to have the best meal of your life based on all of that. When you first walk in, there is a beverage cooler directly to the right of you and a counter with a cash register on the kitchen side and menus on the patron side. Then the random tables plus chairs were kind of haphazardly scattered about. The ladies who worked there knew me and my typical order, so after paying, I hung out fiddling with my phone on the patron side of the counter, adding this crucial detail, only because it comes in later. But at the time, this other patron, who is white, let's call her DG for dumb girl, enters. I am the only other non-person of color in the establishment, a pale pasty ginger. So, dumb girl walks in and kind of starts hoovering by the beverage cooler looking around. This is more of one of those places you walk in, order at the counter and seat yourself. If there's no one at the counter, then it would make sense to wait around up front or seat yourself and wait. The main waitress had just gone back to the kitchen to get my food, so I was awkwardly standing in front of the menus and kind of assumed she knew the flow of things there. In dumb girl's defense, I was wearing all black clothes kind of the typical wardrobe for a waitress. I finally acknowledged her after she started sighing and tapping her food and asked if I was blocking her way to the menus. She responded with a very catty, it took you long enough? You're just standing there on your phone ignoring a paying customer. Do you not want my business? I was totally caught off guard and didn't say a word, just slid over a menu to her. I guess I could understand her being confused, but again, this was by no means a fancy place. Right after she said that, the waitress walked out from the kitchen with my food in the bag and told me to have a nice day. The looks on dumb girl's face switched from embarrassment to confusion to annoyance until she finally looked at me and responded with, Well, yeah, that makes sense. You're not black. Why would someone like you work here? That's what we get for coming to a place like this, right? And then she laughed in that way that white people do sometimes when they're trying to get other white people to agree with them on something sort of racist. It made me uncomfortable and didn't make sense anyway. I just said, I don't know what you mean and walked out to my car. I ended up asking the main waitress about dumb girl the next week. Apparently the dumb girl sent her food back twice saying that it was too spicy and ended up demanding a comped meal. Needless to say, I never saw dumb girl again. Don't mess with my grandma, Karen. My grandmother has Alzheimer's, so she often doesn't know where she is or who is with her. I know for a fact that she has no idea who I am, therefore I make an effort to call her grandma multiple times in any sitting or activity we participate in. Recently, I noticed she needed her hair and nails done as the color in both those areas was fading or chipped. So I made an appointment with a family member who owns a beauty salon and took her there. Normally, customers or those waiting for someone sit in the front area and rarely accompany a person they came with inside the actual saloon floor. So I understand why assumptions were made, but still, don't mess with my grandmother. I was on the saloon floor with my grandmother, sitting in a seat in front of her while my cousin colored her hair. I was there to make sure to keep her calm and engaged while her hair and nails were being done. She was telling me the same story she had told me 10 times in the last 10 minutes, bless her heart, when I felt someone behind me. Now we were in the farthest corner of the room, not near a bathroom or wash station, so there was really no reason someone should be behind me. My grandmother stops talking and looks behind me. Grandmother, chipper as ever. Hey, are you another grandchild? Karen, no, I am not. And why are you not working? There is a line over there. Me, upon realizing she's talking to me, say over my shoulder, I don't work here. Karen, now I can't believe that. You're on the floor, which means you work here. She's talking to me condescendingly, and I do not take that sort of tone well. Neither does my grandmother. In a moment of clarity, I watched that bright chipper smile fall and a glimpse of my brainiac grandmother peek through. 
I shoot a warning glance at my cousin, who is pursing her lips to keep from laughing prematurely. Grandma. Well, by your own logic, my dear, you must be a worker. Go get me a new Coke, will you? That's a good honey bunch. Karen starts sputtering and my grandma laughs. The chipper look returns to her face and she says, Hey, are you one of my grandchildren? As Karen stomps off in her loud high heels, my grandma turns and says loudly, I guess not. My grandchildren are not bitches. Oh my jerd, I love my grandma. I don't know where Karen went. I wasn't really paying attention after that. I didn't design your damn shirt, Karen. Tale from years ago when I worked for a consulting firm, the office layout on my floor had four private offices that were for four different independent contractors. One specialized in graphic design, one in copywriting, one in media sales, and one in advertising campaigns. All of the assistants for these different specialists sat in one large room out front at our tiny desk. Each of us worked for only one of the consultants, but were happy to pass on basic information to the other ones. We, however, had no contact info or calendar access for anyone else's boss. I was sitting at my desk doing SEO work when Karen flung open the front door violently enough it actually banged against the wall. I was the closest to the door, so I jumped and looked over. Karen took this as a cue to storm over to my desk and throw down a CD. Did you people make this? She snarled. I pick up the CD and look at her. No idea what the fuck she was talking about. Um, was my brilliant reply. Did you people make this? Oh God. Volume was the only reason I didn't know what you were talking about. Thanks, Karen. Karen snatches the CD back from me. We had these t-shirts designed by graphic designers dude. And he gave us these files and the printer said they are all messed up. He ripped us off. Me, oh, so graphic design dude made this for you. Well, he's not here right now. Karen launched into a loud, profane tirade questioning my ability, my education, my personal attractiveness and parentage, which yeah, aren't the best, but that has nothing to do with her stupid t-shirts. I finally pull out my mom librarian voice. Me, madam, madam, surprising both of us, Karen stopped talking. Me, madam, I do not work for graphic dude. Best I can do is give you a pen and paper to write him a note, but if you worked with him, you should have his email or phone. Email is the best way to get in touch with him. Karen, when will he be back in office? Me, no idea. I don't work for him. You best call him or email him or leave a note. Karen, well, go in his office and check his calendar and tell me where he is. No, couldn't if he wanted to. His office is shut and locked. Well, unlock it. Well, I, I don't have a key. We just work in the same building. Call him and tell him I'm here and I need to speak with him. Uh, no, I don't have his number and I'm not his secretary. Not really true. I have his number, but hell no, I'm not playing receptionist. Karen, I spent a ton of money with you and I demand... Madam, you do not spend a ton of money with me. I don't work for a graphic dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't do the computer stuff. You're just a secretary. Now get him on the phone. I took a second to figure out how me sitting in front of the computer and using it when she came in, not doing the computer stuff or how secretary is no computers. But this wasn't the brightest tool in the box and she was giving me a headache. So I went to my boss and asked her to dislodge the Karen Barnacle from my life. My boss. Madam, I'll be happy to give a message to Graphic Guy. Well, where is he? Uh, I don't know. You can leave a message. Are you the manager? My boss. Uh, yes. She's a consultant. She's self-employed by her own company. So I guess she is her own manager. Technically mine too. But neither of us were sure what Karen was going for here. Well, I want to speak to the owner. My boss, uh, owner of what exactly? Karen turns and points at me. I shit you not. This woman snarls that girl there. My boss and I are sharing a look. My boss says to Karen very slowly, you want to speak to her owner? Karen nods empathetically. I want her fired. Other guy in the office pipes up. Don't you mean disowned? My boss glares at him. My boss, madam. 
I am her boss and I am not firing her and we have nothing to do with Graphic Dude. We can't help you. Please leave and try to get in touch with him on your own. More shrieking, Karen is now questioning both my and my boss work ethics, personal grooming and voting preferences. My best guess is she got herself all worked up into a righteous indignation rage at the t-shirt issue before she came in. And she just transferred all of that ire to me because I opposed her will. But her anger at me for not working for Graphic Dude is way out of proportion. Graphics Dude's assistant has walked into the office during all of this and being the accommodating soul he is offers to look at the file. Karen stomps over and hands it to him. While he explains that Graphic Dude is out of town at a wedding and won't be back until Tuesday, Graphic Dude, by the way, does not do any work outside of the office, which upsets Karen more. The file opens for Graphic Dude's assistant dude. It's some hideous summer family reunion t-shirt. Other dude looks at Karen, so what's wrong with it? Karen scoffs. The screen printer said the file is all messed up. Graphic Dude's assistant dude looks confused. Uh, it's, it's fine. Karen, no it's not, she shrieks. Now other guy is trying to explain that the file is fine, but she can get in touch with Graphic Dude next week. Not good enough for Karen. She keeps yelling while Assistant Dude looks at the image more closely. Assistant Dude, oh, are you Miss Karen Mac bitch face? Karen, yes. Assistant Dude, oh, okay, I can fix this for you. Karen smiled broadly, praises him in a sickeningly sweet, good puppy manner, and saunters over to us to explain how she is still going to get us all fired. And it's about time, blah, blah, blah. Assistant Dude comes over and hands her a new disc and sends her on her merry way. My boss goes back to her office and shuts the door, telling me not to come get her if that harpy ever comes back in. I look at Assistant Dude who is grinning. Assistant Dude is a college sophomore, graphic dude grossly underpaced to gain experience, and he gives no shits, so I know something is up. Me, uh, okay Assistant Dude, what did you do? Assistant Dude, come take a look. On his computer is the image Karen wanted on her t-shirts, opened from the disc she brought in. Freaking Comic Sans, Mac Bitch Family Reunion 2020, with a dumb picture. Okay, assistant dude. And here is what I just saved on a new disc for her, and shows the same image where he has replaced the text with, Bitch, pay me, and a middle finger graphic. Assistant dude is smiling, I remembered her name finally, he said. Graphic dude was pissed, she sold him this sob story about why she couldn't pay half up front like we normally do and he made an exception. Then once she had the files, she refused to pay for it. Originally we were going to get the shirts printed for her, but she stifed us and took the file and ran. She figured she could just get them printed herself. I told graphic dude not to give her a print ready file for approval, but he thought since we were going to handle the shirt order, yeah. I get it now, she likely went to the cheap local screen print shop that I happen to know doesn't have anywhere close to the latest version of any graphic programs. This comes up a lot in this office, if a customer uses that shop, the shop guy will try to open a file saved from the latest version of graphic software and go can't open it. Go get it saved as an earlier version and sends customer back. This Karen wasn't bright enough to remember anything past file no work you bad. And of course, you all are probably quicker than me and realize what it took a minute to dawn on me. Karen gave assistant dude her disc. He saved the new image on a new disc and gave it to her. She left the original file in our office. So unless she was smart enough to make a copy, she now no longer has the file she stiffed graphic dude on. I'm sad to say that she never came back in. I hate the story with no follow up, but such is life. Myself, I hope she got the shirts printed without anyone catching the file change. I brought assistant dude some banana bread I baked the next day to thank him for his efforts. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this and want to watch more videos, then click here for more stories or go check out the info card in the right corner for more videos.